It is my theory that Battle of the Bands was attempting to capitalize on the music craze that was emerging in video games in 2005. But oddly enough, the game was released exclusively on the Nintendo Wii. So what could possibly be the selling point of this game, when there are others that have clearly done a better job immersing the player? Well, what else? Carnage and gratuitous ass shots. In this game, you play as one of 11 bands, and your goal is to beat everyone else in musical combat, and eventually topple over this evil conductor guy. Because... he's obviously evil. This game is very light on the story. Here you get a first look at the bands, each with a background and master of a different genre of music. Rock, country, funk, Latino, and... marching band? Look, look, look at my crotch! Look, look, look at my crotch! Look at my crotch! Look, look at my crotch! The game only contains 30 songs, all of which are sung by cover bands, and sometimes it is painfully obvious. I tell you, there's nothing sadder than Pick of Destiny when it's not sung by Tenacious D. What the fuck? The goal of each match is to pretty much get a higher score than your opponent. But your secondary goal is to control the song the longest. You see, as you battle, the songs will switch between the genres of the bands. This is why I always go for the country band. First, that little piece of eye candy on the fiddle. And second, hearing the country cover band perform all these different songs is the biggest laugh this game will provide. Wide world of sports is going on here. In fact, I would probably say this is the best cover band in the game. Well, if they wanted to fill me with an overwhelming urge to open fire on the performers, mission accomplished. <laughs> Now, in Guitar Hero fashion, you get a scroll that signals the actions you need to take. Unlike the other series, strumming on a plastic guitar has been converted to movements on the Wii Remote. Following the pattern, you'll flick the controller left, right, down, or rarely, a stab forward. Oh, and these zigzags. By God, I hate these zigzags. Might as well tell you now that the control response to this game can be shonky at times, and I can never get any of these bigger zigzag fields. Okay, so we covered the music half of the game. What about the fighting half? Well, for every number of notes you play, you automatically launch an attack against your opponents, raising your score or distracting them from raising theirs. There are three types of attacks. All of them have this kind of little animation that flies at the top of your opponent's scroll. And while that's going on, one of your actual band members will have a little attack animation. But you don't really get to see that during the game, since all your attention will be focused on that one-fourth of the screen that really matters. And I should tell you not to worry if you lose control of the song. It doesn't mean you're losing. In fact, even if you're doing great, you'll lose control of the song over time. And whenever your opponent manages to land an attack on you, the song switches. It's just a gimmick in the game that makes you listen to the two versions of the song. Anyway, back to the attacks. First, you have a weak attack that is slow and does little damage, but it costs the least amount of notes. Then you have a stronger attack, which is fast, does a lot more damage, but costs more. And then you have special attacks. As you progress in the game, you'll be able to unlock stronger and stronger moves. Unfortunately, there is no level system or anything. It's just that every so often, you'll beat a band and get a new weapon. 
And although there are 11 different bands, many of these special attacks are shared, so no one band has a truly unique set of maneuvers. Ignoring that disappointment, there are some interesting abilities, like smokescreening your opponent's scroll, deploying an electric field that shocks you if you get too close to the sides, planting landmines under notes, moving the notes, changing the speed of the scroll, or even freezing your controls completely. Another reason I chose my band is because it seems to have some of the best specials. When you start the game, you have a time bomb maneuver. It's basically a game of hot potato. Hit enough of the green notes to send the bomb to the other team. They then have a chance to send the bomb back to you, and then, well, you see where I'm going with this. Now, your attacks automatically launch whenever you get enough notes, but you do choose which of the attacks you want to launch by toggling the A button or using the up and down on the directional pad. I'm telling you to use the directional pad only because the A button rotates it in one direction, and you can easily make the mistake of selecting the wrong attack. Although it doesn't matter, you'll jerk the control around so much, not realizing you're hitting that button anyway, and you won't know what attack you're using. Now, what's the real difference between a slow and fast attack? Well, actually, that's when a defensive move does come into play. You can block your opponent's attack for a split second when you hit the B trigger. A force field pops up around your score. Naturally, these slower attacks are easier to block than the fast ones. Oh, and you can't block special attacks, which makes them even more special. Occasionally, normal gameplay will be interrupted by this little solo mode, where each note you play will launch an attack. Right here is where you'll really need to learn the block timing. Other than that, you can pretty much just focus on playing the notes. However, after you play about 30 minutes with the Hillbillies, you'll unlock the Ricochet Special. That's where you not only block an opponent's attack, but you can send it right back at them. I can't tell if I'm doing double the work or the same amount, but it's a strategy that pretty much breaks the game from here. This game also likes to stretch itself out through costume changes. What? No! I did good! You should be taking clothes off, not putting more on! How do you go from Daisy Dukes and a hillbilly broad to Whistler's mother? What was I saying? Oh yeah, there are basically three acts to this game. You beat all the bands, then you beat the big baddie. Then you beat all the bands again, then you beat the big baddie again. Then you beat all the bands. You see where I'm going with this, don't you? And for a game that has such little plot, it is really heavy with dialogue between battles. Some of it, I guess, is kind of amusing. And this is the only game I know that is constantly telling you not to play it. In between rounds, a little message pops up telling you to take a break. It's like they knew not only would all this shit flying around on the screen strain your eyes, but the fact that your wrist will feel like it's falling off after about two songs. There is almost no replay value to this game, because, frankly, you've replayed the game several times to beat it. Aside from listening to all the different songs and the various styles, and maybe seeing how all the different bands perform their attacks and celebrate their victories, there's not much here. And that stinks, because I like the core concept. This game was made by THQ, which has been very experimental with gameplay. But, unfortunately, they tend to start with a really interesting idea, but then rest on their laurels, letting the game coast on what has become a gimmick. And yes, I'm planning on finishing Quest 64. But while we're on the subject, 1998, 2008. 1998, 2008. 1998, you see where I'm going here. But to be honest, I think the best thing for this game is a sequel. Say what? I mean it. Remember Street Fighter? Of course you don't, because that game was sewage compared to Street Fighter 2. It took the original and improved every aspect of 1,010%. I would love to see what would happen to this game if that happened. Introduce a better combat system with more types of attacks and maybe an actual upgrade system. These guys are basically Highlanders. Why not set up a system where you can weaken a band by eliminating a character or two? And work in some Paper Mario 2 where the number of fans affects the gameplay. And maybe you can customize both the attacks and the players with an item system. I want to choose between a guitar that shoots bullets and a guitar with a Tesla coil. I want a rhinestone jacket that gives me plus 8 charisma and reduces all fire-based attacks by 20%. Or better yet, someone just adapts Six String Samurai already. Nice tuxedo. Nice tuxedo to die in. Never settle for less.
never settle for stress, but I'll settle for spit hot metal dead at your chest. And I hope you got your best on with your rosary. I never start stuff, I give it to those opposing me. You never heard of me, well, my friend, you're dozing me. All the homies in the hood, they've all chosen me. Cause when I spit it so real, they relate to me. Tell the story so vivid, make you think it's 3D. From a life on the street to the life with money. From the brokest hood rats to the finest honeys. Real talk, no joke, from broke and nameless. To the fellers you consider to be rich and famous. In 1957, the bomb dropped. The last bastion of freedom became a place called Las Vegas, and Elvis was crowned king. Now his only heir has died, and Vegas needs a new king. One guitar-picking, sword-swinging wanderer is fighting for the throne. And one lone orphan is along for the ride. If you scratch my guitar, I'll kill you. They called him the Six String Samurai, and he became a legend. Jeffrey Falcon, Justin McGuire, Six String Samurai. Huh?